Mm. It does. Because uh -huh. you have to pay for the court costs. You have to pay for the attorney to draw up all the papers. It's not free. How much? I don't know. A thousand dollars. So, you see, this is this is how in the Old Testament they would have they would have their own way of doing an adoption, right? Maybe they had their own kind of court. We don't know what the procedure was for them to be adopting children. But if somebody came from outside their religion, outside Judaism, into their, into the, and they said, okay, supposing I'm not a Jew, okay? And I come to the rabbi and I say, you know what? Your religion really impresses me and I want to become a Jew, okay? The rabbi would tell me that the only way you can become a Jew, you have to be baptized into, into Judaism. So they would do a baptism and then that person would be considered a Jew. Do you understand now? Yes. Okay, so we take that same concept and we bring it down to Christianity now, in this time. And Jesus says that the only way you can be an adopted son or daughter of God is to be baptized. So you repent and be baptized. Repent and be baptized, okay? All through the Holy Scripture. So, coming back to baptism. What does the word baptism mean? It means what? Washing. Washing. So what are we washing ourselves from? Sin. Sin. Because... Just like we go take a bath, if we are dirty, we take a bath, we become clean. Baptism, it's a spiritual washing of our souls. That we are, we, are, we, are, we are believing in our mind that when we get baptized, that all our sins are washed away. Now, let me ask you a question. How many do we have to keep going and getting baptized over and over again? No? Yes or no? Huh? No? Yes or no? Anybody answering? No. Teresa, what do you think? Yes. There's no right or wrong. Give me an answer. What do you think? Just tell me what you think. Okay. Matthew. Uh, okay. If we are baptized, do we need to go and get baptized again? No. no. Okay, supposing when we are a baby, a little baby, and we get baptized, right? So they said that our sins are all washed away. What sins are they talking about? Because we are a baby. How can we have sin? sin what sin? What sin would a baby Original have? sin. Original sin. That's a sin of Adam and Eve that, that comes through the blood. Okay? Do you understand or not? Let me explain it to you like this. There's a woman that she's sick and she has AIDS. HIV virus, okay? She has AIDS. When she has a baby, what is the baby going to get? It's going to have AIDS because the mother has it. Do you understand? Right? So it's like a virus or some big disease, okay? You all understand? So the disease goes from mother, father to father to child, father to child. It's hereditary, right? So like say your dad and your family have a history of diabetes. That's why when you go to the doctor and the doctor asks you, does your dad have diabetes, did he have a heart attack? Because they can track from that, that what, the, what, what disease your father or your, or your grandfather or your great-grandfather had, that disease will come into you because it's in your genes. Do you understand? So just like when we are born, even though we don't commit sin, but we are still guilty because we have the sin of Adam, because it's hereditary. We didn't commit it ourselves, but because Adam sinned, we are all guilty. Do you understand? So when we are baptized, when we are baptized, then that sin of Adam is washed away. Now let me ask you another question. When the sin is washed away, does that mean that we stop sinning? No. 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 Are we still going to sin? Yes. But we can get baptized again, so how do we clean ourselves? Confession. Confession. So when Jesus talks about the washing of the feet, right? He says when you take a bath, you don't need to, you don't need to take a whole bath again. You only need to wash your feet. That's what he's talking about. You only baptize once. But we have a continual washing of the feet because as we are walking through this earth, we are going to come keep making mistakes. It's not like we keep repeating the same mistake over and over again. We, we, we repent, we are sorry for our sins, and then we we go confession. Okay, is it, is, is, is it making sense so far? Yes or no? Yes. What did you need to ask? Okay, so I'm not understanding the question. Where would they go in if they died? If they died, you're asking me? Okay, according to the Catholic Church, we believe that if a baby dies, Okay, the baby goes to purgatory. Okay, what is purgatory? It's a it's a temporary place between heaven and earth. All right. Can you spell it out? How can I spell it out? Yeah, sure. Um, 
Okay, that's what it's called, purgatory. Okay. So why why is it so very important that as soon as we are baptized, that is why does our mom and dad want us as soon as we are born to get baptized as fast as possible? That's the reason why. Because they want that sin taken away from us, so that if we die, we don't go to purgatory. We go straight to heaven. Do you understand? And this is our belief as Catholics that the mom and dad. So like, just think of this: if, if when the baby when the baby is born, okay, and the baby is going to drink milk, what is the next thing that the baby does? It what? It sleeps. And what else does the baby do? If it eats, what is it going to do? It's going to poo poo. So does the does the mama does the mama say? You know what? I'm not going to wash the baby's uh, bottom because the baby's going to keep poo-pooing all the time. So let me just wait till the baby is 12 or 15 or 16 years old, and then I'll just let it wash itself once. Does the mama do that? Yes. No. No. So why? Why? Why is it that the other some of the other religions that call themselves Christian they say no, 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 no? We are going to wait till the baby gets uh, old enough and sensible enough till they are old enough to make their own decision. Go ahead. So they, are, they ask a question, why can't we just wait till the baby is old enough and then let, let the baby go and make its own decision to get baptized, okay? And that's the difference between Catholicism and some of the other religions. In our faith, we believe that because of the original sin of Adam, we want that sin taken off as soon as possible. Just like the baby poopoos, the mother cleans it right away. As soon as the baby is born, within a week or 10 days, we want to take the baby to the church and get the baby baptized. Do we understand why we do that? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. That's the reason, okay? No, purgatory is not where you pray. Purgatory, that's a that's a temporary place between heaven and hell. Okay, I don't understand all the concepts about purgatory. Uh, I will have to go back and ask Father, and then I'll come back and explain to you. So, do you stay in there forever? No, you stay in there for a little while until the, they say that you until you pay off for your sins, and then you go back. Okay. Okay. Who else? Anybody else has a question so far? Okay. Let, let's not uh, get me off track. Okay. So, what was what was the reason why Jesus got baptized? What do you think? Does he? Uh, what what was the reason we discussed that we need baptism? To be adopted in, into sonship, right? But Jesus was already the Son of God. So, did he need baptism? As far as that point is concerned, he didn't need it. Uh, so what, what, why do you think Jesus needed uh, baptism? To show that he was the son of God. Okay, how, how did he show that? By the dove. When Jesus went into the water, okay, first of all, let's look. Let's look and see. The, we talked about the first uh, exodus, we talked about the second exodus, right? Every time they had an exodus, okay, you have the nation of Israel, and every time they came into the land to conquer the land, you know how they got into the land? How did they do it? Sneak. They had to what? Sneak around. They had to cross the river Jordan. Oh. All right. And where was Jesus baptized? The river Jordan. In the river Jordan. So he had to cross the river. Jordan river. Right to come into the land. All right. So when you come into the land, when you come into the land, what were the three things? The first thing was that it was given, the provision of promised land was given to them, right? Because God promised them that he was going to take them into the promised land. So the promise is fulfilled. That you were out of the land, you cross the river, you come into the land, right? Now think about this. Is water good or bad? It's good. Good. Why? It's both. Because it quenches our thirst. Water is a coolant. It pulls us down. It's a lubricant. It keeps all the stuff moving freely inside us. Water does a lot of things. It cleanses us. Right? But it's also bad. Why is water bad? It can drown us. It can drown us. Like, remember in the days of Noah? So water can be good and water can oh, be bad. I have a movie related to Noah. It's yeah. Heaven the Almighty. Yeah. Now think about this. Say you go into the water, right? And now I'm going to be baptized. So when I go into the water, I go all the way down into the water, right? Because I have to be immersed. You know what immersed means? All the way down, right? So when I'm down and the water closes over me, what is that a picture of? Drowning. It's a picture of death, right? Because when I'm going into the water, I'm dying. Now the water covered me, I'm dead, right? And if I stay down in there for a little while, the water, all the ripples settle and you can't even see me no more. So what is that a picture of? Death. That's a picture of burial. So you go in the water, you're dead, 
right? You're sitting in the water for a little while longer, all the ripples stop, the water comes back to normal. That's like somebody being buried in the grave, right? When they're buried in the grave, and if you go there and you clean the ground and flatten it out, and there's no tombstone there, can you tell if somebody's buried under there? No. You can. So when Jesus went into the river Jordan, and he immersed himself into the water, he was actually giving us a picture of his death, okay, of his burial. But then he came back out of the water, and what is that a picture of? Oh, resurrection. That's a picture of his resurrection. So think about this now. Oh. Oh. So you see, now we are coming back. Now we are coming back to the Exodus. Okay. In the Exodus, okay, God brought the people out of Egypt. Okay, and He brought them where? Into the. Into what? The Jordan River. No. No, Before the they got to the Jordan the River, where did they go? The they were in the wilderness. They were roaming around in the desert, right? Oh, oh yeah. Why were they roaming around in the desert? Because it takes at least 15 years to get out of the desert. No, it would have <laughs> normally, it would have taken them only two weeks. Really? Two weeks to make the journey from Egypt to Israel. Okay, think about this. It would have normally taken a person two weeks to make a journey from Egypt to Israel. Why did it take the Israelites 40 years to make the journey? Because they had no compass. Why? Anybody? The navigation. Because why? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm still not hearing this. They were going in circles. They literally, they were going in circles. Why were they going in circles? Why were they going in circles? Guys, close that. Why were they going in circles? They don't know where they're going. They don't know where they were going. But God was leading them. So did God not know where he was taking them? No, so what? There was a reason why. First of all, think about this. They were under slavery for maybe a hundred years. So in their minds, they were free, but they were still slaves. Yeah. Right? So God had to teach them that you're not a slave anymore. Okay? But they were so used to being whipped, and they were so used to being ta told what to do. They needed to start thinking on their own. That's why God brought them into the wilderness to teach them. Okay? God wanted them to take that slave mentality out of their mind and throw it away. But in their minds, they were still slaves. Okay? You know when they, when, you know when they, when they uh, get a baby elephant? Right? You know how they train the baby elephant? No? They take a chain and they tie the chain around the baby elephant's leg and they take it to a stake and they put the stake in the ground and they tie the other end of the chain to the stake. So the baby elephant, it'll move and when, when it tries to pull the stake, it's small at that time. It can't break the chain and it can't pull the stake out. So the, the elephant, in its mind, it becomes a slave to the chain because now it thinks that it can't go anywhere, right? So think what happens when the elephant is being trained that way to think, and then all of a sudden, now the elephant has become big, right? Big, before the elephant was very small, but now the elephant has become big. It has the power to even pull a whole tree down. But why does the elephant not do it anymore? Even though they still put that same little stake and the same little chain, because every time the elephant moves that chain and he hears the chain rattle, he thinks, I'm, I'm a prisoner. And the elephant doesn't go anywhere. Did you know that? Let me give you another example. Let me give you another example. This is true. This is a true story. I'm not making this up. In Nepal, okay, they believe in the monkey god. Okay, so they, they worship the monkey, right? So because they worship the monkey, they can't kill the monkey. If anybody is found in Nepal killing the monkey, they're going to be put to death because they're killing their god. So now, because of that, the monkeys are overrunning Nepal. Okay, they are everywhere. So what do they do when, when you have a field and you've grown some crops and the monkeys come and they destroy all your crops? You know what they do in Nepal? They make jars out of clay. Okay? And they make the hole, the mouth of the jar, only so small that the monkey's hand can go in. Right? And in the bottom of the jar, they put a big fruit or they put a big, uh, some kind of candy. Once the monkey puts his hand in the jar and he grabs the candy, now his hand is not small anymore. See, he can put his hand in like that. But once he grabs the fruit, now his hand is this big. So when he tries to pull his hand out of the jar, it won't come out. Do you know the monkey will never leave that fruit? It won't. It won't leave the fruit. So what happens to the monkey? He's become a prisoner now. So they come and they catch the monkey and they put him into a cage and they take them far away to the jungle and they release the monkeys. Guess what? After a few months, the monkeys are back. But think, this is how stupid. It's not just the monkey. We are like that too because sometimes when we are going through life, 
We are holding on to something and we can't let it go. And we make ourselves prisoners. All we have to do is let it go. Let it go. And that's what, that's what God says, let go and let God. Right? It is, it is that simple. It is that simple. Because we keep holding on to it and we can't let it go. Okay, so one of the reasons was that when Jesus went into the water, he immersed himself, it was dead, burial, resurrection, right? Then Jesus crossed the Jordan. Okay? Now think about this. So in, when we were talking about the Jews, they were roaming all around the wilderness for 40 years. So for 40 years, they were in their minds, they are what? They are slaves. They can only come in and possess the land when they cross the river Jordan, right? So Jesus came and he got baptized, right? But the Jews are all getting in, in the wilderness and God is testing them, correct? God is testing them to make sure that they get to that point where they can go in and possess the land. They need to learn how to fight. They need to learn how to stand up for themselves. They need to learn how to go and possess the land. They were not ready. When God asked them, when God sent Moses down to them, Moses went up the mountain, right? He went up Mount Sinai and God talked to Moses and God said that these are all my rules and my regulations. Do you, do you, can you go down and ask the people if they will keep these laws? And guess what the people said? When Moses came down the mountain with the first set of laws and he asked the people that these are the commands God has given, what are we going to do? And you know what the people said? They said, all that God has commanded us, we will do. And we can do. So what were they relying on? They were relying on their own strength. They said, we can do. Right? They couldn't do anything without God. We can do. So God said, oh really? You're going to do it on your own? Let's see how long it takes you. 40 years. That's why they were roaming around and around in the wilderness for 40 years. Because they were trying to do it on their own strength. So they were trying to do it on their own strength. Do you understand? Yes. So 40 years pass, right? Oh, and then... Um, 40 years pass, and then Joshua takes them into the land. Not Moses. Okay, Joshua takes them into the land. Now think about this. The Israelites, 40 years roaming around in the wilderness. Round and around, round and around. Am I correct? That brings me to another nursery rhyme. Have any of you heard this, this song called Round and Round, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush, the mulberry yes, bush. Yes. You know what that song is talking about? Yes, it is talking yes. about the plague. Oh. It was talking about the plague that hit Europe. You know why? Because when that plague used to come on you, you know what a sign was? It would form a rose, like a ring of roses. Or like ring a ring a roses, pocket full of posies. Why did they do that? For the same reason. Because when that ring came on your hand, Round the ring of rosies, pocket full of posies, because they would put flowers in the dead person's pocket so that the dead body would not stink. So every every nursery rhyme is there for a reason. Okay, again we went off topic. So now the Jews are roaming around and around in the wilderness for 40 years until they get to that point where they're able to go and possess the land. Right? But now they're going to go into the promised land. Why? Not because of their own strength, but because Joshua is leading them. Okay? And Jesus is a picture of Joshua. So you think about this. The Jews got tested. The Jews got tested in the, in the wilderness, correct? Yes. After they got tested for 40 years, then they crossed the river to go into the promised land. Why? In the baptism of Jesus, does Jesus get baptized first? And then he goes into the wilderness to get tested. I asked myself that question this morning. Huh, I never thought about that in all my years of Bible study. So this thought came into my mind. So why do you think that the Jews got tested and then they, got, they, they did the baptism of water going through the river Jordan? Why is it that Jesus got baptized first and then he got tested? He was special. He's special. He's God. Right? So he got, he got baptized because he was giving us a picture of his death, burial, and resurrection first. And then he was showing us that because of the death, burial, and resurrection, that he is able to go face Satan and destroy him. Oh, you understand? That that, really so now on whose power are we doing it? We are not doing it on our power. We are doing it on the power of Jesus. And where did that power of Jesus come from? From the oh. death, burial, and resurrection. Do we understand? Okay. Wow, this is so in, when, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the husband, when, when there's a marriage ceremony, the husband and the wife, they come together. Okay. When, so, when we have a marriage and there's a husband and a wife, they come together, right? It's a physical coming together, okay? What is another way? So, what, what, what is the wife doing? She's putting something into her body, right? And the husband is joining to the wife. 
So how do we how do we consummate the marriage? When we when we go to church, how does the marriage get consummated? Uh, by the priest. By how? But how? Uh, okay. How do we get Jesus inside us? Tell me that. A kiss. A kiss. How do you think that <laughs> we can bring Jesus inside us? <laughs> how 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 do you think we bring Jesus inside us? How do we wish. say that we say that the Holy Spirit is in us or God is in us or Jesus is in us? How does He come inside us? Uh, the Holy Eucharist. The Holy Eucharist. When we take that communion and we taking His flesh and we drinking His blood, that's how we get Jesus inside us. Do you understand? You right. So how do we? Now Jesus is in us. How do we get into Jesus? Uh, we pray for him. I'm sorry. By learning more about Him. Okay, so one, one way we got we, we understand now, it's pretty easy, right? We, we, eat, we eat the bread, we, we drink the blood, we become. You ever heard the saying that you are what you eat? Yeah. Yeah, what does that mean? Oh, I did that for my um, uh, project. What does it mean, you are what you eat? If you eat it, that's what you become. You eat it, that's what you become. So you keep eating candy, candy, candy all the time. What happens to you? Yeah, you candy. candy. You're going to become sick with diabetes, right? Sugar in your blood. Right? So you are what you eat because you keep putting the sugar in your mouth. Eventually the sugar is in your blood and it kills you because the life is in the blood. Is it making sense? So when we are eating the Eucharist and we are drinking the blood, the, the wine, we are actually putting Jesus in us so we are becoming more like Jesus. You understand? Yeah. So we, we become, he becomes like, a, he comes in us and we become more like him. You understand? Yeah. Okay. okay. So, now you understand when Jesus went into the desert, okay, let, let me give you a little bit of history. Okay, so like uh, 200, 200 years before Jesus was born, okay, there were several there were several messiahs or prophets that came claiming to be the one that would save Israel from the Greeks and then from the Romans. Okay, so there were two armies that conquered them and put them under suppression. You remember Alexander the Great? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So Alexander the Great conquered Israel. Okay, and he had them under suppression for a while. But then what happened was Alexander the Great died. And when he died, he had four generals under him. So what they did, they took the, all of Alexander's territory and they divided it among the four generals. Okay, and then the fight started among them. Eventually the Romans came in and the Romans defeated the Greeks and the Romans took over. Okay, so there were, there were a lot of times when the Jews tried to get power back from the Greeks or from the Romans to get it back for themselves and make Jer Jerusalem or, or Israel an autonomous uh, country. Are you all following so far? Yeah. Okay, so how they tried to, to, to teach the people, because there was, a, there was a verse in scripture, which was a prophecy, and the prophecy said that the army that comes in to conquer Israel will, will have to cross the Jordan. Okay, so what they did was they, they, were, they were forcing the prophecy and trying to make the prophecy true. So what they did when they collected all the armies, they collected them at the Jordan River, and they crossed the Jordan River because they thought just like the Exodus, once we cross over the Jordan River, we can go and take possession back of our land. Okay, this is history. You can go back and check this out. All right? So, now here comes Jesus. Do you see him with any armies? No. no. To be a king, to have a kingdom, you need to be a to king. You need to be a king. If you, want, if you want to have a kingdom, you have to have a king. If, you have, if you're a king, you have to have, you have to have a domain, right? That's why we call it kingdom, right? Because king is king and D-O-M is short for domain. You all get it? Let me write it on the board so you all can see it. Domination. So you have a king and he has, he has domain, right? So that's where we got the word kingdom from, you understand? So the domain means a territory. Domain means territory. So the king has to have a place, right? So he can be a king of the place. But he can't have a king without a dog. King without what? He has a place, but what does he need to rule over? A king. What does he need to rule over? A king. Huh? A Not king. Rule over the queen. A the queen is his wife. Who is he going to rule over? The people. The people. Exactly. So he has to have people. He has to have a place, and he has to have people. See, again, we see this in Genesis. God created the earth first, and then he populated it. So. You have the place, then you have the birds and the animals and the people, you can become a king because you're ruling something. You understand? Yes? Everybody's getting it? Yeah. Okay. So, 
Jesus comes to the river Jordan. Do you see anybody behind him? Where is his army? Jesus is showing us, I'm a different kind of king. He gets baptized. He showed us that the way he's going to win the battle is how? By his? Love. By his? In the water. By his what? Death. 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 What else? Resurrection. Burial. Death. Death. Burial and resurrection. So he showed us that this is the way I'm going to win the war. And then when he comes out of the water, and he steps out of the water, what happens? The heavens open. The heavens open. Why? Because it's like a curtain. The heavens are like a curtain. So the curtain opened this way, right? Because we have the sky. The sky is this way, correct? And then it says that when Jesus died on the cross, the temple of the curtain was torn in two. So one curtain got torn this way. That was when God came down to earth. And the other temple was torn this way when man can go to God. So what are we saying when we do this and we do this? What are we saying? You see it? So two curtains torn. Two curtains torn. Yes? Oh. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Wow. It's ironic. Okay. It's ironic. Alright, so mm -hmm. Jesus tore the two temple, the two the two curtains, the curtain this way that was separating man from heaven. And then he tore the curtain this way that was separating man from God. Okay, in the temple. You get it? So this is why we had baptism. Now, how much time do we have left for you? 10, 17. 10, 17, 13 more. Okay. Yay. All right. So, have y'all have y'all understand understood what baptism is? So, what does baptism do for us? Okay. You know what? Why don't you come up here and do a little review? So we can follow up and see what they've learned. Okay. I am tired. You're tired? Yeah. How tired do you think I am? I've been talking for an hour and. <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to do now, and this is to encourage you all to take notes during class. Every time after class, we're going to take notes. Great, great. And you're going to be, you're going to be good in, in this particular project. To encourage you all to take notes and listen during class. Every After every class, we're going to go around the table and ask everybody what they, just one thing that they learned in this class. So we'll start with Derek. And I'm not going to allow to, for you to repeat the same answer somebody gave, so uh, always take lots of notes and you will have a back one and a back one and a back one. Okay? Derek, what did you learn today? He needs to speak louder so everybody can hear him. Good, good. Basic principle is God wants us in relationship with Him. That means that we should be happy to be with Him. So be happy to come to church. Always be happy to uh, talk and be around God. Great, Mary. Matthew. What, what is it? Okay. Okay, so Matthew said that he learned what Exodus was. What is Exodus? It's Exodus. And he said he also learned about relationship with the family. Okay, Nathan. In 70 AD, the Romans destroyed the Jewish temple. And in 70 AD, the Romans destroyed the Jewish temple. Why did the Romans destroy the Jewish temple? Because they wanted payback. Because they wanted payback. Okay. One of the reasons. Great. Sweet. Uh, I learned once relationship and marriage. Okay. So marriage is a form of relationship, right? Yes. Because first we started as the father and son, and then we talked about having brothers and sisters, and then we talked about the marriage. Okay. And then there's also the relationship of friends, right? Okay, good. Anthony. <coughs> the word kingdom. What does word kingdom mean? Um, the king of the domain. The king that has control over his domain. Yes. Okay, good. How Jesus uh, showed that by his baptism, how he's going to die and win the war. Okay. 
Uh, Teresa said that, uh, that during his baptism, he showed how he was he was died, buried, and resurrected to win the war. Right. Good. Right. All righty. to be a history major. He learned that when Alexander the Great dies, he he, uh, he gave the king his kingdom divided into four different generals. Okay. Josue. Uh, Okay. Uh, Josue has mentioned that uh, we as Catholics baptize our children as, as, as babies. The reason is, is one of the, what was it, one of the examples why we, we wait, we do it as soon as possible and not wait till they grow up. And also because you don't, it's just like when they poop, you don't wait for them to grow up to clean themselves, right? That's part of the parents' responsibilities to take care of that stuff, right? Okay, good. Natalie. Okay, Natalie learned that baptism was to wash away original sin. Good. Anna. Same thing Natalie said. You got something else? Yeah, that was fun too. Marriage? What about marriage? Uh, it's the, the last step of the relationship. The better relationship, marriage, and that's the same. Okay, we'll count that. Marriage is, is the last step. The last example of the process of uh, the different relationships that were established. Okay, Hannah? Okay, uh, Hannah mentioned that the relationship, the relationship you have with your parents and your siblings. Uh, it's important that you interact, right? Because if you don't interact with them, then there is, if there's no relationship, then there's, it's not fun to be there, right? Okay, just Okay, What Eucharist means? What does Eucharist mean? Body of body of Jesus Christ in the wine is is turned into the blood of Jesus Christ. The wine tastes like cranberry juice. What's that? The wine tastes like cranberry juice. It tastes like cranberry juice. Exactly. It tastes as though. Who wants to ask you a question? Is that what I'm cooking? Here's an explanation of the history. Uh 
Purgatory. Julian said that it's a purgatory. She uh, learned that it's some place that's between heaven and earth. Yeah, that's where they are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Grace learned about how some of these uh, rhymes relate to the history that, that, that we mankind have gone through. So, okay. Okay, as we wrap up this class, and before we uh, have our little Everybody stand, sit down, please. Let's, uh, okay. let's bow our heads and let's uh, say a prayer. What happens is uh, your friends and family are praying for you. They, they don't. They, they don't. And that's why you should, whenever you go to church, you should always pray for people that have, that have passed away. And pray to the same God, pray to the same God.